When I was 11 years old, my mother told me that the devil was in all of us. I didn't understand the Christian metaphor that good and evil was a part of the human psyche. For me, there was an actual being inside of me trying to get out and make me do bad things. It made for some bizarre-ass dreams. It turns out that I did have something that was within me that came out only at night. In the summer of 1966, under a full moon in the woods of northern Maryland, I became an 11-year-old werewolf. Now I know what you're thinking. I've seen all seven seasons of Teen Wolf, and you're no scary, hairy heartthrob. That's a fair point, but hear me out. I was tall and bulky at 11, 5 foot 8, 150 pounds. I stood a good head above my peers. I was crowned with a thick head of unruly hair. And for me, it was 365 bad hair days a year. To complete this appealing look was my constantly running nose and never-ending loud <coughs> raspy hack caused by year-round allergies. As you could probably guess, I wasn't the most popular kid. My school days were spent in the back of the classroom, probably because my dripping nose and loud cough grossed out the teacher. The one thing that made school tolerable was dreaming of outdoor camp. I couldn't wait for summer in the two weeks at Broad Creek Camp. Being at Broad Creek was a different world. We were all outdoor kids, not worried how we looked or sounded. You'd fit in if you liked hiking, swimming, and booger jokes. <laughs> in May, my parents finally got the camp forms. Mom, are you done yet? Mom, are you done yet? I kept at her like one of those ankle-biting yappy dogs. Calm down so I can finish, my mom answered patiently. I settled for reading the forms while she filled them out. As she went down the medical checklist, there was the usual stuff. Allergies, all of them, check. <laughs> Appetite, never ending, check. So, 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 nambulism, check. Wait, what's no sambulism? Back then there was no Google. No sambulism wasn't in my junior dictionary and mom provided no information. I guess it would be my little mystery. The time until summer moved like molasses in January. Finally, July came, and it was time to grab my dad's army duffel and full of everything that I would need for two weeks of fun and board the yellow sweat box to Broad Creek Camp. My tent mate and new best friend was Ernie, a husky guy like me. Husky was adult code for too fat. <laughs> He sat behind me on the bus and sang all the way to the camp. He never stopped smiling. Ernie taught me church songs on the three-hour drive. I wasn't a fan of church, but trying to sing gospel tunes with him was fun. I did wonder if I had boarded the Christian camp bus by mistake. Our camp home was a canvas tent with raised wood floors and two camp cots, or as Airbnb would call it, rustic chic. <laughs> I think Ernie's dad was a pastor. Maybe I should have asked him about the devil in all of us. He was brilliant too. Perhaps I should have asked him about somnambulism. Except I probably couldn't have pronounced the word correctly. We'd sing on the trails while we hiked, while doing KP, that's kitchen cleanup, and into the night. I think he would have sung while swimming if he could have figured out how to manage the breathing. After lights out, our camp leader would tell us to knock it off every evening. Every day, our camp was busy, a morning hike, a one mile swim, and telling scary stories around the campfire. Ernie told us his favorite story about a hairy beast that comes out when the moon is full and grabs tasty children for a snack. Mmm. That night, the fire was particularly smoky, and I was exhausted. I left the fire and headed for bed in the middle of a coughing fit. Ernie cried out, watch out for the monster. 
Everyone laughed as I headed out. The moon was full, like a giant eerie flashlight, so I was, it was easy to navigate back to the tent. I flopped into bed, coughing made it hard to sleep, and I tossed and turned. Now, what happened next was told to me a year and a half later. All I remember of that night was dreaming about hiking through the forest in polka dot boxers. Crazy, because I only wore tidy whities <laughs> Apparently, around midnight, I rolled out of bed with a thump. I got up, and I started out of the tent, coughing and groaning and stumbling across and off into the woods. My loud hack woke up the camp leaders. They found me walking into a pine tree like the Energizer Bunny. <coughs> nice look. The leaders gently turned me around and directed me back to my tent. For reasons never made clear to me, they left me at the entrance to the tent and returned to their beds. Yeah, you see it coming. <laughs> I couldn't navigate the step back up into the tent. With my hair looking like it had been electrically shocked, the moon at my back, coughing <coughs> loudly, I repeatedly bumped into Ernie's bed, trying to navigate the step into the tent. Ernie woke up and saw my lurching body banging against his bed. His terrified voice rang out, the monster is real! Oh, God, Jesus! His song of terror could be heard across the camp. He sprinted out of the back of the tent and ran barefoot a mile to the ranger station, yelling, God, save me from Satan! <laughs> His mom came to pick him up that night. <sighs> Eventually, I flopped on the floor with my feet sticking out of the tent and went to sleep. The following day, I awoke sore and confused. I rolled over and saw Ernie's unmade bed. That was strange because Ernie was a neat freak. I changed out of my dirty clothes. Where did all this dirt come from? Then I walked over to breakfast. Ernie wasn't there either. I asked the others at the table, where's Ernie? They smirked, shrugged their shoulders in an exaggerated fashion and said, Maybe the monster got him. There was laughter all around. Huh, yeah, funny. A monster got him. I laughed along. I was confused and sad later in the day when I found out that Ernie had indeed gone home. But he was having such a good time, I told our leader. Why would he leave? The counselor didn't answer my question. Get down to the lake. It's swimming time, was his only response. I was getting tired of being in the dark, but I was brought up not to question adults, so I just gave up and quietly headed to the lake. The camp was strange for the next eight days. It was like being at school again. I was the quiet, freaky kid in the back of the room. Kids would stop talking when I showed up. What did I do? It must have been bad because no one was teasing me. Are they afraid of me? No one was singing anymore. God, I just wanted my friend Ernie to harmonize with me and, and tell scary stories around the fire. I felt like I was in the middle of a prank, waiting for someone to spring on the surprise on me. But there would be no funny reveal. I was alone, and camp wasn't special anymore. As for Ernie, I never saw him again. I didn't go to summer camp the following year. Mom never did say why. When I was 13, Mom came clean and told me that I had grown out of sleepwalking and could, could go back to summer camp. My dad gave me the full accounting of that strange evening and explained that I had a condition called sonambulism. And it goes away when you're older. No big deal. Nothing to be embarrassed about. I thought to myself, damn, I'm glad I didn't sleep near a large drop-off or deep water. What the hell? What were they thinking? After Dad finished telling me about what happened, I stared at him in disbelief. So that's why Ernie left. That's why I was a camp weirdo. I had to know why they didn't tell me. I cautiously started my cross-examination. So Dad, 
you taught me that honesty was the best policy. <laughs> I, was, I was walking on thin ice here. I didn't want to appear to sass him. Mom, you taught me about God and Jesus and Satan. That was important, right? <gasps> of course, hon. She responded in her I love you so much smile. <laughs> and you taught me to wash my hands, brush my teeth, and even make fart sounds with my armpits. These are all important things to know, right? Yeah, they answered, looking puzzled by my questioning. I breathed in, breathed out, and went for broke. So why didn't you tell me about my sleepwalking? That's important, right? They answered together, to protect you. Protect me, I thought to myself. Holy hell, Mom, Dad, really? You couldn't have sat me down and had a little talk with me about my sleepwalking, a chat, a tete-a-tete, something? Maybe I would have, wouldn't have freaked out the whole camp. Man, you told the camp leaders, not me. They must have thought I was some kind of an oddball. There was a long pause. Mom broke the, broke the awkward silence. I'm making lunch. Do you want a grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> it's your favorite. Yes, with extra cheese, please. There was nothing more to ask. As far as I knew, my camp midnight walk was the last one. Not that my parents would have told me if I had others. I knew they loved me and they wanted to protect me. I guess they didn't think it was a big deal. What I needed was Google to fill in the information my parents failed to provide. My youthful experiences made me wiser. Like the song says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now, my only midnight strolls are three times to the bathroom to pee. <laughs> Damn prostate. <laughs> I made a point to tell my kids about my sleepwalking adventure and the bogus nature of Satan and everything kids should know. Well, except for sex, religion, and drugs. I left that to my wife. Thanks. Give it up for Matthew Christian, sir.